Hi everybody, Jo here. So you know what that means, time to grab a brew and let's have some crafty chat and a bit of a catch up. Today I'm going to be making this design or something similar and I just thought we'd use a couple of the new stamps, these beautiful new stamps that Tracy's drawn for us and we're going to use a limited amount of ink pads, just the black um, Versafine Claire and then we're going to come in with faded jeans in the oxide. Just because I wanted to show, if you're a new to um, living, you're new to crafting, and you've got limited amount of resources, limited pennies, that this is just with a permanent and a dye-based ink pad, some pencils, um, a couple of stamps, and you can make this lovely design. We don't need to throw everything at it for this one. So I've noticed there's been quite a lot of uh, new followers to Lavinia, which is wonderful. It's so lovely to see you ladies. But also for the ladies who are who are our hardened followers, who've been stamping for years, sometimes it's nice to just do something a little bit more simple, a little bit more pa pared back. But also I'm thinking with, dare I say, that Christmas word coming up, something that we could make quite a few of. You know, we could batch make this card design Again, I've done this size, but you could put it on a little um, a six by six card and just do the centre part is what I'm thinking. You know, you can take parts from it and, as I say, batch card making, it would be lovely. Alter the colours, but I'm thinking I could make a few of these. If I was sending to various members of one family, I could maybe do one in blues, one in, oh, like a pale pink or a, an orange, a rust, gold, you know, and you could make batch make them and just alter the colour enough waffle let's get started so the card I'm using today I've taken a piece out of this card pack so it's my Lavinia Multifarious card I can't even say it kind of Multifarious card need to slow down and I've got the A5 piece so there we go and I'm going to start off with my stamping and you know what I'm like I like to stamp on some copy of paper it's just what I do unfortunately I have these quirks so I must apologize and the first stamp I'm going to use is this one from the I think it's a floral wreath and anybody who knows me know this was just as soon as I saw them this was going to be my favorite <coughs> sorry excuse me I'm just going to grab a drink of water I do apologize my throat is so much better but it does still keep giving up the ghost so if I suddenly go quiet, like I say, I do apologise. But Carl, my husband, is really making the most of it. After just talking for half an hour, I really have to rest it for a while. And like I say, he really is making the most of it. Now, lots of light tapping. And me being me, I just catch the edges. So I just need to clean that off. There we go. And I'm going to start by stamping this sort of about there. And it's a good firm press. But again, don't be in too much of a rush to lift the acrylic block up. Let the ink soak in and always keep one hand on the block. I think as stampers, especially if you're a bit of a nervous stamper like I am, your instinct is to lift it up straight away. But it is better if you can just let that ink soak in just for a few minutes. So we'll give that. And again, with this block, we can just flex it a bit. And then lift it up. There we go. Look at that. Just such a beautiful shape. Now, what I'm going to do now is just blot it because it's a slow drying ink I need to be mindful to blot it when I do workshops I have seen so many ladies go on to the next stage and just smudge it with the hand so I do try and remember to blot it and what we're going to do now is add the little dwellings and these are beautiful and they just fit nicely on my little block here and there's three and when I, I did this design, I literally was just playing, stamped the um, floral wreath first. And then I just thought, oh, what would the little 
dwellings look like right check that's got checking the lights yeah i think we've got plenty of ink on there and i'm sort of going to put that in the middle hmm, i say sort of you know what it's like and we'll just plant that there and again this is more of a silhouette stamp so we do need to let that ink soak in well like I said, these little houses, I'm thinking perfect. I mean, you could use these for a new home card. I'm thinking this one, as I say, is sort of could really go sort of Christmas wise. I think it's going to be more important than ever this year to send Christmas cards, don't you? I think we all need a little bit of happiness popping through our letterbox. So, on with the next one. Now, do remember, if you're not sure where you're going to, which order you want them in, I would use the acetate. Just pop your acetate on before you stamp. So, again, the tall one could go this side. For me, I want to just mirror it with this. So, but like I say, bring your acetate in, have a look and decide on your placement. Now you could put all three on one block together and stamp at the same time. A lot of people do that. Me, I'm just happy doing them individually. But again, it's whatever works for you. Because at the end of the day, that's what um, crafting's all about, isn't it? We all find ways. I mean, I always say any hints and tips that, tips that you're given, see if they work for you. If they work, use them. If not, carry on looking for others. that's that one and then there's this gorgeous little one I'll just pop on next right I'm gonna plant that there if only it was that quick to build houses I'm just going to put the lid on my ink pad just so I don't put my elbow in it and then that would drag right across I mean how many times have you done that put your sleeve in it there we go such lovely lovely houses and once again I'm just going to bring my copy of paper just block that could use your heat tool and just give it a dry but I'm just happy with blotting it so I'm thinking next let's start adding some colour so I'm going to go for my faded jeans you can choose whatever colour you want and I'm going to go for my acetate circle it's just six and a half centimetres um, I must admit I drew around a wine glass for this so it's not quite a circle but you know what artistic license and I've also put a little bit of gold posca in the middle because that helps me see it when it's on my craft desk and what I'm thinking of doing is just putting almost like um, a highlight over the little houses so again using a smoothie into the ink and then onto the acetate and make sure you take quite a bit off the acetate first and then gently flick out and I want this to be nice and soft. I mean, you can use your, your permanent ink pads, your VersaFine Clair. They give a lovely result this way. But for this one, I just wanted to keep it nice and soft and almost tone on tone. So that's why I'm just using the same ink pad. And I'm just going to go all the way around. Again, always onto the acetate first. Don't be in a rush. Like I say, we want this nice and soft. And if I want to see how it's looking, again, I just lift. Don't take it off, just lift it up yet. A little bit more that side. And then I'm happy with that. I mean, as I say, on a small card, you wouldn't need to do much more than that, would you, if you needed uh, a few cards in a, in a bit of a batch, in a bit of a rush? We are going to add some colour to this, so I think that'll just bring it in a bit more. And we're going to add some ink round the edge, so we'll get rid of that and like I say it's all about choices if you needed to quickly batch card make this as I say you could cut this down and you could just mat it on on black 
but because we've got this large area and I want to add some more ink then that's what we're going to do I always have a bit of kitchen roll or paper towel something here again I'm mindful I don't want to put finger marks on here so I'm going to do some blending and I'm going to start in the corner circular motions and if I can I almost want to keep a halo around here a bit of a white area so I'm using the same ink and I'm quickly gonna whiz and I tend to ink up on the corners just because I want the corners darker all the time being mindful of that shape I want to keep this white area so I'm going to go all the way around now I must admit mine is a well used pad so I know it's quite pale circular motions and again I'm using my non-stick craft sheet just so that I can pick up any ink that's on there and it just helps my smoothie glide and gives me nice blending all the way around now at the top here I just want to be mindful if I can I want to leave a little bit of white space so I'm not coming in as far there and then I just want to have a look check I'm in shot sorry I do wander off I get so carried away just want to have a look at my corners now for me this one's a bit pale so I would just go in and add a bit more on that corner just darken it up a little bit and I'm happy with that now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick some water and the reason I'm doing this just want it in these edges oh maybe not such big flicks like that <laughs> I'm just using my fan brush the first thing I do when I come into my craft room every day is I have a little pot of water put clean water in and uh, put my fan brush and my fine paint brush in there because chances are throughout the day I'm going to be flicking water and I just want that round the edge just want to add a little bit of faux bleaching round the edge and with this being I'm thinking a Christmas card design it's going to almost look like snow and I just want to give that a few minutes so what I'll do I'll just wipe my craft mat while that's soaking in and it gives me ideal opportunity to just grab another sip of water so bear with me we'll just let that fall bleach Now at home it's better if you leave it and let it just full bleach naturally but for today we're just going to mop it up look but look at that I don't know if I bring it a little bit closer give the camera time to catch up even here where I put the large flicks on I still like that look at that beautiful it's a great way of making a night sky and the darker the colour underneath, it really shows up. Now, while that's drying, I'm thinking, let's just add a little bit of, um, let's ground the houses. So I'm going to grab a piece of my copy of paper. Just quickly tear myself a bit of a, okay, that's a bit a bit too much of a hill let's go for that's better I'm back with the same colour as I say I want to keep it all tone on tone onto the paper and I'm just going to come down I don't need a lot here just a little I just didn't like it, it looked like they were floating again lift it back a bit more on the paper I know you think you're wasting ink going on the paper, but it's so important. The one day you go straight on there and you get a, a blob, you'll be like, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Lift that back, yes. I like that. What I may just do is, let's just add a little bit. I just want to link my houses up. So I'm just going to here, between the two, just link them up a little bit and just put a little bit of yours here. There we go. Now, I do want to do some stamping on here, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to colour these and it'll just give the card here time to really dry out. 
Now there's various ways of adding colour to wreath here. You could paint some colour in. So you could put your oxide on your mat and paint it to keep it tone on tone. But I'm just going to use some um, ink tent pencils. So these are water reactive pencils. And for me, I've got to be honest, they're a great way of, for me, adding quick colour. And what I'm going to do is just come in with a darker colour. Now, Tracy's very cleverly given you the shading look. She's almost put points here, so it's almost like pointillism, where we've got little dots where we need the shading. So I know the darker area is here. So I'm going to come in with my darker colour there. And then just a nice light, lighter blue and colour the rest in. Now again, because these are water reactive, I can do this quite quickly. Which I'm sure you're very pleased with because you don't want to watch me colouring. Now I could use just normal pencils if you've got a, a gel pen. Um, for me, I just struggle with the larger the area if I'm using a gel pen um, I just find it's better for smaller areas. So for a larger area like this, I would prefer to do this and then maybe add some glossy accents after or some clear embossing powder. I'm going to come in with just my fine paintbrush and just react. And you see how it just comes more intense, the colour, which is why I suppose they're called ink tense pencils. <laughs> Again, be mindful, I've just got a piece of cloth at the side and when I get my water brush out of my pot, I'm just dabbing it on my cloth so it's not too wet. Now again, you would take more time. I'm doing this in a bit of a rush. Well, not a rush, but I, I know you don't want to watch me doing the same thing over and over again. But there we go, for me, and I'm hoping you can see that, the colour... So I'm happy with that. So we can put those to one side. And the next bit we can do a little bit of stamping around the edge. And so I'm going to bring my mat back in play. Once again, if you wanted to leave it like this, you could. This is all about just showing you different levels. You can stop at whatever level you want. Now I'm going to use this lovely sentiment stamp. A little tip. I always put a, a, an arrow on the back of my sentiment stamps just because I have before now been known to stamp one upside down. So for me, I always know it's the right way up. And it helps if you put it straight on your block. Come on, let's do it properly. Now I want to do tone on tone, so I'm going for my faded jeans. And I'm thinking at the top, let's do that one first. So if I ink up the base of the stamp... And then I'm just going to try and keep it parallel. So I'm sorry if my head comes in short. I'm sure you don't want to see that. And let's just stamp that there. Now again, you could use second generation, but I do want to be able to see it. It's such a lovely verse. So I'm going for first generation. Now you could use your Versafine Claire. I did wonder at one point about coming in with the grey, but when I tried it, I wasn't keen on the grey. And I thought, no, let's keep it tone on tone. But it, it's all about choices. And again, it's nice to see how you could vary this. Now, again, I've just caught the edge. So I'll just wipe that. Now I want to vary this side. I don't want to have it all the same. So we'll have that one there. And then let's bring that one in a little bit more. Now you have choices here. I could come in there, but then what would I do in the middle? I'd need to... Oh, well, actually, that might work. And then that's different to the top, isn't it? The problem is if you mirror something, it's got to look mirrored perfectly. So I'd rather not mirror it. So I think I'll do that. So let's ink up the hole. And again, I'm doing lots of light tapping with it being my oxide, but it's important I try and get it straight. So let's see... And then let's do the other side. And again, we'll leave a little bit of a gap. Now I'm just going to turn mine upside down 
I find it easy to stamp this way, but I've got to remember to turn my stamp as well, haven't I? So let's ink it up. That would be a bit of a schoolboy error. So again, let's see, let's put one about there. Check we've got the word in the right way. I can hear you all shouting at me. Don't do it. That one there. Then I'm thinking, let's have one more. Like I say, we've got one, two, three this side. One, two, three, yep. Should be the right amount of space. And let's bring this one in further though. Let's just check I have got it right to the middle. I'm going to bring that one in a bit further. Yeah, I think there will look. Yeah, so when I look at that, again, that's quite nice. I've probably come in further than I did on my original, but I must admit I like that. Almost looks like it's from a bit of a storybook. And the one thing to say is I have got somewhere... I had a piece of black card. Oh, there it is. So if I just show you, always be mindful, this is going to be mounted on black. So you see how black frames it? Otherwise, I could come in and add a darker colour around. But because it's going on the black card, for me, that frames it beautifully. And as you can see, this is really drying now. What I am thinking is, this is just a little bit too white for me. So I'm going to add, put some ink onto my mat and just with my fan brush pick up a little bit of the ink and let's add some inky splatters just a few to bring in and we'll go back over the I almost want to look this to look like a book from a, a almost like one of the old you know the fairy tale book was it Grimm that did the the fairy tales little dwelling so I like that it's brought the whole thing together better just wipe that up otherwise again I'll be putting my hands in it won't I so I'm really happy with that so far now I'm just going to run the heat tool over it so do excuse the noise a minute just to give it a quick dry and always dry from the back oh look there's one of my practice ones. Don't ever be scared of doing a practice one on the back. You'd be amazed how many of us, if you turn over a piece of work, you'll see one on the back. I was just having a little work in of my placement. A few last little things just for finishing off tricks. Some highlights here. Now, there's various ways of had, adding highlights. There's the, the jelly roll. So, again, we can just add some little and you just want that little little highlight you'd be amazed how just a white dot or if you're a fan of the Posca always remember to shake your Posca and again you can do the same with that just that white highlight just that little dot can make all the difference one on there, one on there. Now, we just want to, for the very, very finishing touch, we're going to add some more snow. Now, again, you don't have to do this. If you're a fan of the Posca, you can add some Posca splats and flick it across. But what I thought I'd do with this one, just to add more of the lovely snow, is we're going to bring in some of this um, chunky white embossing enamel or chunky white embossing powder goes by two different names now with this it's lovely but you do need to heat from underneath now look i've just dropped that i had some in the lid my suggestion is pop it in the lid she says i've got it all over my hands so good when you watch people craft live isn't it <laughs> right i'm going to tip that off there and I want to sprinkle it, I want a little bit here, a little bit over the, the dwellings, not too much, a little bit underneath. And then maybe a little bit over my floral, but again, not too much. And then some in this corner. I like diagonals, so I'm going to go this corner and this corner. Now with this, the best thing to do is... Put your heat tool on first, so please bear with me. And give it a chance to heat up. 
I hope you can still hear me. So you want it to heat up first and we're going to heat from underneath. And the way to do this is to choose an area and I'm not sure how easy it'll be for you to see this. I will just do my best. Choose an area, heat from underneath. When that's dry, when that's melted, move on. Try not to waft your heat tool and you need it quite close. Now when I do this at workshops, I always have a bucket of water under the table where the heat tools are, just in case anybody got the card to um, the heat tool too close to the card. And you may find you want to just move your hand round as it gets a bit close. So can you see this area has melted? I'm hoping you can see that. And we're just going to this area at the bottom now. So I've got my heat tool underneath. This is where I really need one of those nice cameramen to come in and do the camera work for me. So I've done that corner now, just catch these few bits up the side and a few across the, the reef here. But like I say, if you go from the front, all that happens is the embossing powder will blow off. That's why we've got to heat from underneath. Right. So what I would do is tap any excess off. There we go. And I'm going to pop that back in there. And then what I would do, and I'm sure you would do exactly the same at home. I would get all these bits pop them back in the lid the reason I didn't do it on a piece of paper to catch it is with this being heat resistant I like to have that underneath almost as a safety net so I'm going to pop the lid on and I'll collect all those when I've finished now your card will warp a little but that's just the heat as it cools down it will go flat and then what I would do is when it's cool that's going on there like that and to me that's just such a lovely Christmas design now the sentiment what I tend to do is I've got this gorgeous I think it's called Christmas words and I tend to stamp this out on any spare pieces of card and then I just cut odd words so I could have peace on this but also depending on who I'm sending it to so maybe my original one I've got blessings but I'm thinking peace in fact I could have Christmas peace no, I think I'll just go for peace. And again, you can just choose. And just to make it tie in, I'm going to use my smoothie. And go around the edge, just so it all ties in nicely. And what I would do is then pop that on there. So like I say, I would just wait for that to just cool off. And what I'll do is I'll bring my original one in. So that's the one we've made today. And this was the original one. I probably can't get them both in shot. So I'll leave you with that one. As I say, there's not much difference, is there? And this would make, as I say, a lovely um, six by six or smaller. But because I love doing these edges, I really wanted to show you that. So I'm probably best leaving you with that one because it's got the white behind. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'd love to see, please, I'd love to see your designs, especially with these new stamps. They are gorgeous. So I'm going to go now. Thank you for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.